Okay, so um, most are sessile, uh, the animals that are ready, um, easy meals for other animals. Um, again, they have a defense mechanism. Don't think that they are, they do not have a defense mechanism. They can defend themselves by you know, their weapon is called the matocyst. Okay, inside of the cells of cytocytes, they have a cell called cytocytes, and inside of the cells of the cytocytes, they have these structures called uh, nematocysts. If I can find uh, the model, here we go. So on this model, uh, not only hydro has it, all other uh, have it too. So this would be a cell. Inside of the cell of nidocyte, they have a structure called an organelle, if you would, it's called nematocyst. Okay, so this is a nematocyst in, uh, inside of the nidocyte. And there are different type of nematocysts. I will, I will mention them, I will talk about them. Uh, can injure human and cause even death? Uh, class cubozoa, which we do not have specimen of it, as I said, cubozoa. We do not have specimen of it. Um, they can kill human. They, they, you know, everybody likes to research these guys. You know, they say my snake is the most venomous animal on planet Earth. I don't know the facts, but your textbook or other places they say they are, uh, their venom drop by drop. We're comparing drop by drop. Their venom of cubozoa are uh, more deadlier than any other venom on uh, planet Earth. Um, two well-defined germ layers. They have ectoderm and mesoderm. Uh, the ectoderm and endoderms, I'm sorry, they do not have mesoderm. Um, sponges, they did not have any germ layers. Okay, right? I'm, 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 I'm making comparison between these guys and sponges. So they have uh, ectoderm and endoderm. So they are diploblastic type animals. We are, we human are triploblastic. These guys are uh, diploblastic animals. Uh, if mesoderm, if they have something similar to mesoderm, it was draw, it came from ectoderm. And then uh, sea anemones, um, uh, sea anemones have some of that uh, a little bit. Epidermis uh, becomes um, uh, epidermis and gastrodermis. What am I trying to say? That uh, epidermis came from ectoderm. And gastrodermis, which is the gastrovascular cavity, the, uh, the food get absorbed, and so on and so forth, came from endoderm. Okay. So um, uh, gastrodermis cells in gastrovascular cavity, simplest animals with nerve cells. So the first group of animals you're seeing with nerve cells. Uh, sponges did not have nerve cells. These guys have nerve cells. Okay. Uh, here is a difference between uh, radial and bilateral animals. Radial animals, you cut them in any direction. Any direction, you cut them this way, that way, that way, this way, any way you cut them. Both halves are alike. Like sea anemones, flower animals, common name for these flower animals. And then, but human, we cut human, you only can cut it one way. This way, and both halves are alike. Externally, of course. I'm talking about external features. Uh, main characteristics are all aquatic. Um, two forms of, I'm talking about main characteristics of cnidarians. The last one was main characteristics of radial uh, symmetry animals. This is the characteristic of, uh, of um, cnidarians. And they're all aquatic. Two forms of life, polyp and medusa. Not necessarily all species have the two forms of animals, like hydro is only polyp stage. They do not have medusa stage, hydro, okay? And I say aquatic, uh, hydra is an a, is a unusual one. It's found in lakes, ponds. Uh, it's not found in the ocean. Uh, exoskeleton or endoskeleton of chitinous, calcareous, uh, or protein molecules. But I'm talking about exoskeleton. Um, I'm talking about the corals. If you would, um, some, uh, some anemones make the corals. But anyhow, gastrovascular cavity, mouth, and anus is in one place. These animals do not have anus. 
Okay, so that would be a nice discussion for your dinner table tonight with your loved ones if you want to eat more on the table. So you talk about these things, they will, it turns off their appetite. So you eat more. So here is the animal, here is the animal if you would. The mouth is right here and the indigestible, the fish for example, they eat. The indigestible will get out through here as well. So mouth and anus is in the same place. Mouth and anus in the same place. They do not have a separate place for anus. Okay, so um, uh, in animal kingdom, that's kind of unusual. Uh, we'll study a few species, and after that, get out of that. They, then we we'll see that the digestive system is complete. Most animals have a mouth and anus, uh, but these guys, uh, it's in one place. Uh, they have tentacles, of course, uh, to catch prey. Here are tentacles and jellyfish. Of course, uh, I do not have a model of it, but we have specimen of it. Uh, they are there. Uh, Nidocytes is the name of the cell. You remember that? The cells, this is a cell. This is a cell, nidocytes, and they show them in this model by the red dots all over, or black dots, and inside of them is a nidocyst. Nidocytes have contained nematocyst. So be familiar with those two terms. Epithelial muscular cells, they have, uh, they do not have distinguished muscle cells. They have muscle fibers. Those muscle fibers, I'll show you some pictures, um, which have actin and myosin and so on and so forth. Uh, they are a, at the base of the epithelial, look, look like epithelial cells of epithelial cells of the animal. They are on the surface of the animals, most likely. Asexual and sexual reproduction, of course. They do multiply asexually and sexually. Uh, Planular larva, that's what I was uh, thinking very hard this morning to remember. Ciliated after the sperm and egg get together, then uh, they form a, a planular larva, which is ciliated outside of it until they go find a hard surface, a rock, uh, and then they start growing uh, their polyp stage and then medusa stage. No respiratory or coelomic cavity. These guys do not have any coelom. Coelomic cavity, no respiratory cap, uh, structures, and so on. Uh, phylum, Cnidarian or Solenterata. Uh, the, this is the old name when I was in school taking zoology. It was Solenterata. Uh, uh, it means gastrovascular cavity. They have a gastrovascular cavity. That's pretty much what this area is, right here. This area is called gastrovascular cavity, solenterata. Um, had spongiocele, right? You all know what I'm talking about, spongiocele. There's a hollow cavity right inside of the sponges. These guys, they don't call it spongiocele. They call it gastrovascular cavity or solenterata. And the old name for the fire, the whole thing. They have nidocytes. The cells that contain nematocysts, and uh, these nidocytes, uh, the uh, nematocysts, there are different types, I will talk about that. Okay. Uh, mostly marine and, uh, and a few freshwater animals, uh, hydro uh, hydroids, uh, sea anemones, jellyfishes, and horny corals, uh, they all um, they belong to class high, uh, sea anemones, jellyfishes, uh, horny corals. It means the hydroids, another term uh, for uh, being sessile, uh, 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 is sometimes being polyp state is hydroids. Some textbooks refer to your textbook says this is a hydroid stage of, for example, sea anemones is this. Uh, hydroid stage of jellyfish is that, or horny corals. Four classes that we are going to study. Hydrozoa, Scyphozoa, <coughs> Cubozoa, and Anthozoa. Again, for the lab, we do not have Cubozoa, uh, but I have a few things to say about it in lectures. Uh, main characteristic of uh, Cnidarian, again, uh, polyp or hydroid. You remember that? I gave you that term before. Hydroid are sedentary. Uh, it means they move, but they move very slowly, <coughs> unlike uh, sponges. Sponges don't move at all. Sponges don't move at all. The adult one, not the larva one, or not the, uh, the um, gemmules. You remember that? The gemmules can become uh, the float of the water will take them on. Okay, they have oral, oral 
And so on this animal, for example, and I'm sure you talk about it here, the, on, on this animal, this is, can anybody see this? Can you guys see this? This is the oral end of the animal, where the mouth is, and ab oral end is that end of the animal. We call it oral ab oral. And that's a term usually referred to animals that are radial symmetry animals. Radial symmetry animals have oral and ab oral. And in case of jellyfish, imagine these are the tentacles of jellyfish. This is the mouth right here, usually it's under the umbrella. So the oral portion of the animal is right here. Am I making some sense? And the ab oral portion of the animal is there. So oral, ab oral. Same as starfish. Later on, you're going to study a starfish, oral, ab oral. I hope I, I make it matter. Tubular form, uh, what is a tubular form is usually the hydroid stage or the polyp stage is like a tube. That's what these guys are. That's what they call them. Uh, but the medusa stage in most cases is not, like jellyfish, uh, medusa stage is not uh, uh, tubular. Uh, some form colonies, like see, uh, I do not have any model of a colony, but um, Portuguese man of war uh, is an example of uh, a colony. Medusa stage, the ones that are their bell shape, their bell shape, okay, mouth in the center, and mesoglia is thicker. I'll show you the picture to show, to show you what is a mesoglia layer. Mesoglia layer in this model, uh, between, between blue and orange in this model is a mesoglia layer, very thin. You see it on your microscopic slides. You have a cross section. You have a cross section of this animal on your slide, and mesoglia layer is identified. Okay, so could be lab practical again. Uh, mesoglia in jellyfish is thick. What else? Uh, Nidocytes contain nematocysts, and nematocysts has operculum. So uh, I don't. This does not show it very well. Uh, and uh, there are three types of nematocysts, penetrant, uh, uh, penetrate and inject poison, uh, evolvents, yeah, these are, uh, the, the fonts got larger for some other reason. Uh, evolvents is entangled prey, and glutenants, adhesive substances for locomotion and attachment. So these are three different type of nematocysts three different type of nematocysts. The functions are there. I said the functions. Uh, penetrance, it penetrates into the fish or human and bring the fish after they paralyze the fish with the poison, then bring the fish, the tentacles, bring the fish to the mouth. Um, what else? Uh, Volvent, entangle, goes around the prey and of course move the prey to the mouth. Uh, glutenant adhesive substances for locomotion. So sometimes uh, in this, in the case of uh, hydro, the glutenants are usually on the bottom. They detach from bottom of a lake, and then they, uh, the float of the water will take them somewhere else, and they want to attach again to the bottom of the lake. They use that nematocyst, the glutenant nematocyst, to sit on the bottom of the lake when they move around. Okay, for attachment and locomotion. Yes? What's operculum? Operculum, they have a flap. Uh, I'll show you. Uh, usually what happens if this is the nematocyst, they have a flap. That flap, this flap, comes open, becomes attached to the animal, and then the nematocyst gets up. So operculum, for the rest of semester, it's a flap. Okay. I don't know if you've seen it on big semi-trucks, exhaust system on the top. Those have their exhaust on top. I think somebody tried, here's a flap on top. Next time you see it, you can show it to your kids and say, hey, that's operculum. You say that, you're going crazy. Yes. Then Jose, no? <coughs> okay, nerve net, they have neurotransmitter. They are not myelinate, something we talked about at the beginning of semester. Myelin is a characteristic of more advanced animals. These are primitive animals, so they do not have myelin. Okay, uh, neuromuscular system, they have it. Uh, you will see a picture of it here, uh, but it's very primitive. The muscle cells are not there, but muscle fibers are there, and the neurons innervate. Uh, they release uh, neurotransmitters into those 
muscle cells. Here we go, the com comparing of a uh, polyp stage, hybrid stage, with a medusa stage. Okay, this is a polyp stage, it sits on a rock, on the bottom of a lake or ocean, what have you, and this is the medusa stage, which they, they, they do move around. Uh, Nidarian diversity, polyp stage, tentacles, uh, ectoderm, which uh, ectoderm is a very outside, becomes epidermis, and endoderm becomes your gastrovascular, not the cavity, gastrovascular, gastrodermis layer, they call it. Mouth is in this one, mouth is here, anus is here, anus is here. I hope I'm making some sense. Okay, and of course, tentacles on the uh, Medusa stage, tentacles on the polyp stage. Okay, here we go. That's the operculum you were talking about. This is the operculum, it's a flap right here. When the cell gets stimulated, that thing gets stimulated, there's food, and what happens, the operculum opens up, the nematocyst, the filament portion, the filament portion of the nematocyst gets out and do its job, whatever it is. To entangle, to penetrate, or like an act like a glutenin. And they are, these cells are scattered throughout the animal. Okay, this is the epidermis. On the bottom of the epidermis, there is a muscle layer, muscle fibers. So these neurons, sensory cells, these neurons stimulate the muscle fibers, not muscle cells, and the animals can contract and move a little bit. And then these are your gastrodermis layers, which they absorb, uh, gastrovascular cavity, gastrodermis layer, which absorb food and nutrient, and mesoglial layer is between the epidermis layer uh, uh, and the, the gastrodermis layer, okay? Interstitial cells, they are just like a stem cell. They are like a stem cell, they can differentiate to other type of uh, cells. Uh, Class hydrozole, let's talk about, uh, that was the general, it was a general diagram of, uh, of, of cnidarians. Of course, this is the nucleus, nucleus, and this is the, uh, the nidocytes that is uh, not fired. This is the one that is fired, is discharged. Class hydrozoa, there are four species in there. We do have them in the lab. I'm hoping you would study them, you would know them. Obelia, Hydra, Goenemis, and Physelia. Physelia is your Portuguese man of war. Okay, common name for it. Some have Medusa, Polyp, or both. They can have both, such as uh, Obelia. Obelia has uh, Polyp stage and Medusa stage. Hydra has only Polyp stage. And of course, Phycelia is, uh, is a colony. And you will see, he will, hopefully you will know colonial, some and mostly uh, marine, but hydra is fresh water, we talked about that. Velum, this class has velum. Velum is a structure that is under the umbrella of the, um, of the jellyfish, the, the, the uh, medusa stage, and they, uh, they are, Theories they do help with the movement sub umbrella surface of jellyfish of class hydrozoa and they do um, maybe help with movement. What else is a colonial colony? We'll talk about that. What are five differences between hydra and the rest of hydrozoa? Uh, you can bring up the answer next time. Uh, I do have the answer, but that would be good uh, homework for you. Think about them. What are five differences between these guys? I already mentioned a few of them. Uh, chance favors the prepared mind by Louis Pasteur. Uh, if your mind is prepared, then uh, the chance knocks your door, you get it. That's what I said. Um, it was said because most scientific discoveries, big scientific discoveries, were uh, discovered by chance. The person who discovered penicillin, he was not looking for, for penicillin. He was looking for something else. He came to the lab one morning, his petri dish, there were all the bacteria he was growing, it was all dead. They put him in trash can, true story. They put him in trash can. And then he thought about them. Uh, trash can, what killed them? So he went, physically, he went to the trash can and picked up his petri dish and, and separated what killed the bacteria. Voila, he discovered penicillin. 
So and again, your, your brain has to be prepared in order to discover the, the chance that is given to you. If you don't buy a lottery ticket, I guess. <laughs> and so how come I don't win? You know, that's the complaint I have. That's the difference between me and my wife. My wife buys a lottery ticket, I don't. And I always complain, how come I don't win? Well, isn't it something? I mean, it's cuckoo. Is that right? No. <laughs> hydra. Let's talk about the hydra. Fresh water hydra. Mouth open to gastrovascular cavity, buddy. That's what this is. Uh, I have the other model too. So these animals move uh, asexual reproductions, like buddy. They do have gonads and they do have gonads, which is testes and ovaries. They do have them, but they multiply by uh, budding as well. Budding is asexual reproduction, so when they bud, uh, genetically the uh, the bud, the new one, is similar to the old one. Okay, uh, testes and ovaries, epidermis, gastrodermis, and mesoglia, interstitial cells, and I'm hoping you find out. Uh, these stem cells in these animals, what they differentiate to. There are certain cells they do not differentiate, but what cells they can they, they can be differentiated. Holoblastic cleavage to form, we talked about that at the beginning of, to form holoblastula. Uh, I clipped a video from YouTube uh, here a long time ago, I couldn't how they feel. Here is a pretty much most of the structures that you should know on these animals. They have tentacles, hydro, again, I've been holding up the model, tentacles, and then uh, cross-section of the animals, gastrodermis, epidermis, there's a glial layer. Um, the bottom is called foot, stalk, this is the main stalk, bud, okay. Uh, um, uh, hypostome is the, uh, right in this area of the animal, it's called hypostome, and then uh, here is a nematocyst, tentacles, I guess, uh, nidocytes, right here, gastrovascular cavity. Goinemus? Uh, marine, uh, hydromedusa or hydrozoan, jellyfish, uh, medusa is mature, uh, gonads attached to the radial canal. Um, I'll show you some pictures when we talk about, um, uh, when I talk about jellyfish, then you will see the gon where the gonads are. Uh, external fertilization, what does that mean, external fertilization? Does anybody know? Yes. Very good, like most fishes. Most fishes, the male release the sperm, female release the egg, and sperm and the egg meet outside of the animal and fertilize, and then that becomes gastrula, morula, morula, gastrula, so on and so forth. That's external fertilization. In case of human, normally, I'm not talking about test tube baby, normally our fertilization is internal. Not all of the animals in this class, you will see the jellyfish in this phylum, have external fertilization. There are internal fertilization too, which we'll talk about, like a uh, moon jelly we have there. Okay, that's internal uh, fertilization. Polyp stage might undergo asexual reproduction by a body or may uh, form a medusa. Uh, Obelia, I guess I've, I've saved all of the pictures for uh, one shot. Uh, it would be nice to show you a Goinemus picture now, but I guess I didn't. Uh, colonial marine hydrozoan, uh, I'll show you some pictures. So they have uh, its colonial stages. Sexual stage is free swimming medusa. Uh, medusa similar to Goinemus, but smaller. Again, Physalia, Portuguese man of war, is the common name for it. We do have specimen of it in a container, in a jar. Polymorphism, it means they have more than one shape. That's pretty much what co uh, 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 colonial means. Polymorphism, colonial, they have more than one shape. Look like a single animal, but it's made up of these colonies. And that's what polymorphism means. Okay, feeding colony in your notes, maybe you want to write it down. Another name for feeding colony is called gastrozoite. Yeah, all right. Gastro. Zoi, okay, and reproduction colony is called Gono Zoi, and then uh, defense colony is called what? Dactylo Zoi. Dactylo Zoi. 
So there are three names for these three colonies. They have uh, the dactylozoid defense colony has a lot of nematocysts. And then, of course, uh, gastrozoids has a lot of uh, uh, gastrovascular uh, cells and gonozoids for reproduction. And you will see that in uh, Obelia. You will see these two um, definitely nicely in Obelia. Okay, uh, find um, in the uh, Portuguese man of war, these are the two structures I would like you to find them, float and crest. Float is when we go to Monterey Bay Aquarium, if you look into the water, you might see these, um, uh, these um, Portuguese man of war floating on the top of the water. What you're seeing in there is the float, but you have to grab one closely and you see the crest. And again, we do have them in the lab. Ask me, I'll show you where they are. A single colony has both polyp and medusa stage. Here is a goinemus, okay? A little bit uh, different than your typical normal uh, uh, jellyfish, but they are a type of jellyfish, if you would. And here are the gonads, okay? Here is a mouth, a, an anus, both. This is the oral portion of the animal, this is the oral portion of the animal. And mesoglio layer is thicker in these animals than hydra. Here is the obelia. Uh, we do have uh, we do have them in the slide. Uh, they they're very small, microscopic. So this is the colony. All of this is the colony, and also polyp stage. The medusa stage are these guys, okay? And of course they release the sperm. Uh, the sperm uh, fertilize the the egg outside, and they become planular larva. Planula larva swims, sits on the bottom of the ocean, and becomes a hydroid a polyp stage. And then all of the polyp stage then use the, the different colonies grow up. For example, this colony is your gastrozoid colony. This is the gonozoid colony. Inside of the gonozoid colony is full of immature polyp stages, like these guys, okay, male and female. And then eventually when they mature, they get out of the um, reproductive colony, gonozoid, and then becomes male and female, okay, male release the, uh, uh, the sperm and female release this egg. Okay, as far well as inside of the animal, what you need to know, it looks like a tree, look like a plant. And for a long time they thought they are plant, but they're not, they're animal. Okay, so right in the middle of it, this is the uh, vascular portion, live portion of the animal. Of course, all of these are live on, a, on the main stem right here. And that is called, where is your pointer? It's called your sinusoid right here, sinusoid. Outside of sinusoid, there is a dead layer right here. It's called perisoid, and that is made up of chitin. Chitin is a molecule for the rest of the semester, I guess we will talk about this. It's a sugar molecule, if you would. And attached to it is a nitrogen. Okay, it's a sugar molecule attached to a nitrogen. That's what they call a chitin. A lot of animals have it in the animal kingdom. Okay, so uh, that's what uh, these hairy sort is made up of dead material. It's dead material and inside is uh, living structures. That's pretty much it uh, that you should know. Uh, hydrotheca, theca, it means sac. Hydrotheca is outside of this colony, hypostome, uh, outside of the uh, gastrozoid colony. And uh, gonangium is the whole entire colony, is called gonangium, another name for it. And um, inside of it, uh, the opening right here is called gonopore, so the medusa buds can get out. Hydrant, this colony is called hydrant right here, which is the feeding colony or defense colony. That's what they generally name the call. Class hydrozoa, Obelia is a hydrozoa. Class Scyphozoa, uh, all marine, uh, Arulia, <coughs> most of large jellyfish, polyp absent or reduced. Uh, one order is sessile, the whole entire order. You all know what I'm talking about, order. King Paul came over for good. Uh, no velum in medusa stage. The medusa stages do not have velum. You remember we talked about velum, the aids with locomotion, they say, hypothesize. 
Uh, sexes are separate, gametes release to gastrovascular cavity, uh, fertilization is internal, fertilization is internal, unlike obelia, fertilization is internal, it means the sperm, you, I'll show you a picture, sperm gets out into the water and in the female arm, one of the armors of the female, they go inside of the animal and fertilize the animal. Okay, ciliated planula, um, uh, scyphostoma, you do have, you do not have slide of this, but you have slide of strobila, I'll show you a picture, you have slide of ephyra, and then of course medusa, they don't fit on the slide, we have specimen. Zygote on oral arms of medusa or in uh, seawater, uh, example arulia locating, arulia find these structures for me, uh, uh, oral arms, they are large and big, you can find them, oral tentacles, square mouth, mouth you should be able to find it, gonads, they are in the stomach uh, region, and radial canals, they are on the surface of the eye. Okay, and marginal tentacles which are in the uh, pre uh, pre here we go, okay great. Here are the oral arms, usually you have four of them, one, two, three, four, most species have four. Now you might say, I mean, I found this jellyfish has 10 oral arms. That's fine. But most of them have four oral arms. These are marginal tentacles on the uh, tentacles. They have, uh, they have tentacles on the margin. You saw the one in deep sea. They did not have any tentacles. Okay, the one that was one meter uh, diameter, three feet. Okay, then um, what else? Uh, the uh, gonads are right here. Yeah, usually in, inside of the stomach, right here. These are the gonads, and the stomach are in the same place. Uh, what else do you have to know on the on the list? Radial canals. Uh, write these lines. Okay, all over the radial canals. That's structure. Okay, so let's talk about the life cycle of it. Male and female. Right here is the egg and sperm. Uh, the male. Uh, the male release the sperm and uh, they swim and they go inside of the oral arms, zygote occurs right here, and then of course they release, the zygote becomes ciliated, planula, larva stage, the cilia move, and they find a rock. On the rock, it grows, you saw it on the video this morning, it grows the polyp stage. And then the polyp stage, you have about 12 of, these are ephyra, there are 12 of them, yeah, on your, not on your slides, your slides I don't know for some other reason you have less of them and then early medusa called ephyra right here the ephyra swim and they become mature jellyfish and some of them are male, some of them are female male release the sperm and then it goes to oral female fertilize it and then after fertilization the ciliated planular larva swims get out and then find a piece of rock and the cycle goes on and on and on. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, the life cycle of most jellyfish which are in uh, class uh, Scyphozoa. <coughs> class Cubozoa, quickly, I do not have much to talk about them. Sea wasp, uh, stinging dangerous to human, more dangerous than the other classes. Uh, some textbooks say, uh, your textbook possibly say, Ounce by ounce, the, the venom is more dangerous than scorpions, than, I don't know, rattlesnake, any other animal. Um, again, polyp is small and no ephyra uh, metamorphosis directly to medusa. Uh, and then I guess this is what you were going to say this morning. Uh, Cryptia marsupialis is the name of one species I gave you. Again, we do not have it in the lab, but is the name of one species. Here is a cute jellyfish. The, the, uh, this structure is except the tentacles, I'm forgetting that it look like a cube. If you look at it from top or from bottom, look like a cube. Don't worry about all of these structures in here. Okay, none of these you have to worry about. Okay, is there any other question? We'll talk about anthozoa. I don't want to talk too much, uh, but we'll talk about anthozoa.